Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my complete Kirara guide. Kirara is the newest four star character in Genshin Impact, and she's a pretty unique supportive character who acts as a dendro shielder and also someone who can turn into a box and run around. Because of her unique kit, there are a few different ways to play and build her, which I'm going to cover in this video. Everything you need to know about Kirara regarding her best builds, play styles, and teams will be covered in this detailed guide. Before we begin, though, as always, I want you guys to know that I stream most nights on Twitch. Link in the description if you want to catch me live. And also, I did have a bit of time to play Kirara before she came out on a media server, which is why. I got to get this information out to you guys as soon as possible. With all that out of the way, let's now get into the video. All right, so starting things off, what does Kirara actually do? Well, first of all, her elemental skill is going to be the main part of her kit. This ability will actually do a few things, and its effect will vary greatly based on if you press or hold it. First of all, if you press this ability, you will leap into the air and deal a quick hit of AoE dendro damage to enemies while also creating a shield for you. This ability will scale both on attack for your damage and HP for your shield, with the main focus typically being on your shield strength and the HP that you have, as this shield is is honestly surprisingly efficient. While I'll get into the exact numbers of how good this shield is in a little bit, for now you need to know that the shield is very good and generally stronger than characters like Diona as just a solid shield option. This shield will last for 12 seconds and its exact strength will vary on a few things. First of all, it has a base amount of shield when you just press the ability, but then if your first shield doesn't wear off and you use the ability again, the remaining damage absorption that you have on your first shield will be added on to the new one, resetting its duration but giving you an even stronger shield, which is a really nice thing to keep in mind. Another thing to note is that your shield will be extremely efficient at absorbing dendro damage, having 250% effectiveness, which means that you can basically tank a ton of bloom damage, which is a big thing in many bloom based teams where blooms do so much AoE damage and you're blooming so often. And since bloom is a reaction that deals dendro damage and can damage your own character for 5% of how much you're damaging enemies, this means that a dendro shield can actually help save your life or make your team a lot comfier as you will no longer really have to worry about all the bloom damage that you're taking. With that in mind, you can also hold the this ability and this will actually completely change what the ability does in fact when you hold your ability you turn into a parcel state where you can just walk around climb cliffs and mark enemies with dendro as you apply through them in fact once every 0.5 seconds you can deal dendro damage to whatever enemy you walk over while also greatly increasing your movement speed climbing speed and jumping power this means that this ability is primarily great for exploration and convenience but also has some play styles like if you ever need someone to just apply more dendro and don't have anyone who can be on field do keep in mind however that similarly to sayu's skill, you are sort of locked into this state until you cancel it, which means you can't do any normal attacks or anything when you are inside of the state. So certain teams that rely on normal attacks or supportive characters that rely on your on-field character to normal attack won't be as useful with Kirara if you choose to hold her skill. With that said, when the duration ends or when you decide to use your skill again and end its duration, you will unleash a hit of dendro damage that will have a higher scaling than if you were to just press it. The cooldown of this ability will also scale based on how long you are inside of it, ranging from 8 to 12 seconds, and you can stay inside of this form for a maximum of 10 seconds. Before we talk about her burst though, I do want to mention a passive talent that can actually make her shield a lot stronger depending on how you use your skill. In fact, if you hold your skill, you can stack up this passive talent that will increase your shield's damage absorption by 20% for every stack, stacking up to three times. The way you stack this is by running into enemies. So when you hold your skill, every enemy you run into with a maximum of three will give your shield 20% damage absorption, stacking up to a maximum of 60%. Because of that, you can generally just hold your skill for a short while, run into one enemy and make it to where you're not spending a lot of time on Kirara. It's as if you were to just press your skill, but you hold it for a small duration to get that one extra stack while also getting more energy, four dendro particles instead of three, and instantly get a shield with 20% more damage absorption. On top of that, if you want a stronger shield for whatever you're doing, you can also run into three enemies and then swap out to get that extra 60% damage absorption. It is a very useful passive talent that can help make your shield quite a bit stronger. Now, with that said, Kirara also has an elemental burst that is basically a big hit of AoE dendro damage. This scaling is surprisingly huge, like it can be upwards of a thousand percent if you get it to level 10, while also having these sort of dendro bombs on field that will stay there even when you swap out. Because of that, this is actually a decent amount of damage, but do keep in mind that this scales on attack, and while you do have a passive talent that will give you a bit of an increase to both your skill and your burst damage based on your max HP, the amount of damage you're getting from this is really not that much. It's just a small bonus to where if you're stacking HP and trying to maximize your shield, your shield will be extremely tanky, but your damage won't be that high. Whereas if you maximize attack, the damage on your burst will actually be surprisingly decent and you can use her for that if you want but your shield strength will greatly suffer so it's not my recommended play style it's just something that i thought was worth mentioning for more information about her burst though it has a 15 second cooldown with a 60 energy cost and it's something that you can usually reliably get because of the nature of your teams where you're typically running another dendro character or reactions such as quicken that can give you a lot of energy overall kirara's kit works in many different ways and your exact play style will vary based on what you want and while i'll cover this in the very next section as i said for most players you can simply use her skill and hold it quickly 
quickly to get a very strong shield as well as a bit of dendro application which will serve as her main purpose in most teams and then a burst for a bonus amount of burst damage depending on how you're building her hp for shield attack for damage but typically most players can just stack hp and forget about the rest for your talent priority level your skill primarily for your shield and if that's all you want then focus on this ability whereas if you also want damage you can level your burst as well to increase its scaling with that in mind how good is kirara's shield well as i mentioned earlier it actually has a pretty surprisingly high amount of damage absorption having a high scaling on your max hp in fact when we compare her to diona who's just a pretty standard go-to four star shielder we'll see that her scalings are pretty significantly higher in fact the base shield damage absorption is going to be 16 percent of her max hp at level 8 plus another 1800 whereas diona's at talent level 8 will be 11.5 percent of her max hp plus 1299 making the tankiness of kirara's base shield the minimum amount if you're not holding it at all even quite a bit stronger than diona's shield and that's without counting the bonus amount of shield absorption the better skilling that you'll get if you hold your skill for longer because of the way your skill and your passive talent works kirara is generally the strongest four star shielder at least shield strength wise even when compared to someone like layla again generally speaking there's a few factors that can influence this while only falling short a bit in comparison to zhongli but even then there's situations where having that dendro efficient shield can be very useful now with that said where should you actually be using kirara and how good is she overall for my initial thoughts here's what i think since kirara has a few different play styles in the sense that you can either just use her for a shield and swap out or use her in her cat box form my general take is that this cat box form while it will have some uses is generally not the most meta because first of all you can't normal attack inside of it so a lot of meta dendro teams that have hydro characters like sing cho or yalan or electro characters like beto or anyone who relies on you normal attacking can't really utilize her in that state usually will make it to where your default play style is just going to be using her as a shielder who applies dendro and deals some passive dendro damage without needing to think too much of it similarly to another shield character like diona or zhongli with that in mind though you can definitely use this on field parcel form for a few things like a nilu team if you have no one who can be on field and you want to use your kirara to run around and get that dendro app or in certain other teams or for like exploring the overworld whereas generally your main go-to use case for just generic teams would be that shielder where you would press or slightly hold your skill to get a tank your shield hold it for as long as you need shield wise use your burst for a bit of damage and then swap out and not have to think too much of it this dendro application while it isn't fast is enough to where you can reliably play something like a quicken team or more specifically an aggravate team where you really are focused on how much electro you can apply with just a bit of dendro being enough on top of that you could also use her as a second dendro option with a dendro carry like alhytham and while i don't think she's the best option she can give you a shield and a bit more dendro which is always nice personally though i do think her best teams are those quicken more specifically aggravate teams and also nilu bloom teams where i think she actually does pretty well as she gives you a very tanky dendro shield that can tank the damage of all of your blooms pretty reliably can allow you to run a very comfy new team where you don't have to worry about how much damage you're taking at least to a certain extent while it can in theory enable some healerless nilu teams typically that's not as recommended and pairing kirara with an off-field hydro like kokomi or barbara whose ring can follow you when you're in your cat box form and you are running around applying dendro on everything and proccing bloom very fast can actually make a surprisingly comfortable nilu team genuinely i've played kirara on my stream a lot while testing her and it felt so easy to clear everything in a nilu bloom team where even without kirara or with another dendro character it would have been clearable but especially in the current abyss with how much damage you're taking i've noticed that personally i've had to retry a lot and make sure i actually dodge everything whereas with kirara very a very tanky shield and on-field dendro application it was a very comfy rotation where i genuinely enjoyed the character i believe she's pretty interchangeable with yao yao in that regard but overall as a four-star dendro support i'm happy with her and think that while she isn't necessarily meta she's a good option not a needed one but a nice one especially depending on which characters you have available and which teams you are playing all right so with that out of the way how do you actually want to build your kirara well starting things off let's talk about the artifact sets that you want for most play styles as a supportive character going for the four piece deepwood memory is going to be your general best in slot this is the same as with almost every dendro support who wants to buff the dendro damage of your team while also gaining some dendro damage on the two piece this is because the four piece set will decrease the dendro resistance of opponents by 30 percent whenever your skill or burst hits an opponent and you should have good uptime on this with kirara since you can use your skill every like eight to ten seconds and you also have a burst that will deal dendro damage having a deepwood memories user in basically any team that has dendro damage is going to be essential to maximizing your damage and so putting it on a supportive character whose role is to be a support makes it to where even if you're running another dendro character they can run a more offensive set and not have to run this supportive artifact set because of that i recommend it generally speaking for kirara but other really good options include four piece instructor to give elemental mastery to your team especially if you're playing a reaction based team comp or the four piece noblesse oblige if you want some attack do note that if you plan on running instructor that since it's a four star set while this makes it more accessible early game it also makes the stats worse for the late game in the sense that 
your shield strength if you're stacking HP will be a lot lower, but you can still get away with it and get the EM buff, which makes up for it. Other sets worth mentioning include mix and matching two pieces, notably the two piece glow with the two piece tenacity of the middle for 40% HP total or the four piece of the tenacity of the middle but do know that it's four piece set giving you attack and shield strength will only have good uptime if you're on field on your Kirara inside of your cat form, whereas if not, the buffs uptime won't be as high and it won't be nearly as good. Last, I did want to mention you could technically go an elemental mastery set like Guild of Dreams or Flower of Paradise Lost if you are blooming in a Nilu team, but typically you are not the character that will be proccing the bloom reactions, as we'll see a bit later in the video. So a viable option, but usually not recommended. Whereas typically I would recommend using any of these supportive sets that I mentioned with Deepwood Memories and also Instructor being your most generalistic options. Next up for the stats you want on Kirara, it is pretty straightforward. For a standard and general shield bot build, you want to be stacking HP percent. This literally means HP percent on your sands, goblet, and circlet, and also on the substats wherever you can find it. With that said, there are other stats that can be good, notably energy recharge if you want to use your burst, which isn't a must as we saw earlier. It's a nice extra hit of dendro that again, dendro application and damage is always nice, but it isn't the most important part of your kit when compared to your shield. So getting energy recharge is more of a passive thing to get more so than your number one priority. With that said, it's usually really easy to get her burst back, assuming you have some energy recharge because most of her optimal teams are running either another dendro character and or have a ton of particle generation, like for example, quicken teams that run characters like Fischl, as well as proccing the quicken reaction, which means you're getting a lot of energy. So typically energy recharge isn't the biggest problem, but having enough on your substats is definitely still something that you want. Other than that, you can get elemental mastery if you're proccing reactions, and you can also look for crit rate if you're running the Favonia sword and crit damage if you want more damage as well. With that in mind, if you want to build her damage or want to go for a more hybrid build where you don't just care about her shield, while this isn't typically recommended for like a standard comfy playstyle, it can be nice if you want to deal more damage and don't need the shield. And in that case, you can consider more offensive artifacts like either attack percent on your sands or staying HP percent on your sands for shield strength and then going for a dendro damage bonus goblet and a crit rate or crit damage circlet, whichever one you need more of. This would be more damage because Kirara, while she does have a bonus HP scaling, most of her damage will still come from attack and dendro damage and crit will be the way to optimize your damage. With that in mind, it's not what I recommend. Like there are situations where it can be optimal or fun if that's what you're going for. But for most people, I would recommend going HP at least until you have a good enough shield and then the rest of your stats could be invested either into more HP for a comfier shield or some of the damage stats or elemental mastery, depending on what you want and what team you're playing. Do keep in mind though that your burst is a decent amount of damage and some teams want to use it more than others. So getting enough energy recharge to use it is nice, but keep in mind that the exact amount of energy recharge you need varies heavily based on how you're playing your Kirara as you'll gain particles passively when you're inside of your cat box if you stay on field and will need less energy recharge if, for example, you catch the dendro particles that your skill generates on your Kirara herself. And you can run, as I said, teams that generate a lot of particles. So keep all those factors in mind. You can need anywhere from no energy recharge to like 150. All right, now with that out of the way, let's talk about Kirara's best weapons and which ones you should be using. Starting things off for her best in slot, it will typically be Nilu's signature weapon, the key. This weapon is great because not only is it virtually the only sword that'll give you HP percent on its stat, but also on its effect. But on top of that, it will also give elemental mastery to both your Kirara and your team based on how much HP you have, which means that stacking HP is even more valuable than just for your shield and a bit of damage as giving elemental mastery to your team is going to be great in reaction based team comps. Overall, this is her best slot, but if you don't have it, it's perfectly fine. There are other options you can use that are basically just any supportive weapon for your Kirara. The weird part is that a lot of these supportive weapons give energy recharge and in practice, you don't need that much on her, but they typically will have good effects for your team, like any of the following weapons that I'm about to mention. First of all, Sapwood Blade is a great free to play option while also having an effect that will proc a leaf on the ground that you can pick up on a character, buffing their elemental mastery from 60 to 120, depending on your refinement rank level. And you can get this weapon all the way up to refinement rank five for free as it is a craftable free to play weapon. Because of that, giving 120 elemental mastery to your active character, which is typically going to be the one proccing the reactions, it's who you're going to be picking up the leaf on, can actually be pretty useful in practice and a nice passive increase in damage to your main damage dealer. Other good options include the Favonia Sword, which loses a bit of value on Kirara because the amount of energy you're gaining is a bit overkill and a lot of her teams don't need that much energy generation. For example, many Nilu team variations or Quicken team variations, especially if you're running Fischl and Nahida who generate a lot of particles, don't need the most energy, but Favonius is still very useful in general. And then it gets more valuable if you pair her with characters like Sino or Alhytham. So this weapon is just good overall, a bit less good on Kirara, but it can still be very useful for your team if you have enough crit to proc its effect. Other good options include the Sacrificial Sword to reset your skills cooldown with the last hit of the cat box form if you plan on holding it or the first hit if you just tap it or short hold it while also giving you some energy recharge. Now, while this effect won't make it to where you have 100% uptime on your hold skill, like you'll still have some downtime, it can help either get more energy or get more shields or just have a comfier rotation if you plan on holding your skill. So it's just a viable option, even if it's not the most recommended when compared to the other ones I mentioned. And also worth noting with Sack that you can actually manage to stack your shield because 
because of the way the ability works, as we saw earlier, whereas every new shield you press can stack up to a certain amount of your max HP. So having Sack does have that bonus benefit of giving you a tankier shield, definitely a weapon that you can use for comfort. But keep in mind that will require a little bit more field time and will be more or less consistent based on your refinement rank. So it can be a pretty decent option if you want to just increase your shield strength by pressing or short holding your skill twice. Lastly, other options you could use are Xyphos's Moonlight if you need the elemental mastery, but usually it's just a worse version of Fav. Jade Cutter if you have one spare because it gives you HP and then also some crit rate. Or lastly, the Freedom Sworn, which is probably her second best five star option as a nice supportive one that will give you elemental mastery, which is a bit wasted, but it will also buff your team's normal charge and plunge attack damage while also giving them attack percent. Because of this, it can be nice when paired with carries that want to do these attacks or that can benefit from this attack percent like Sino, Alhaitham, or even Kaching. But I do believe this weapon is better used on someone like Kazuha, so viable on Kirara if you have it, but not needed. Lastly, before we move on, if you want just generic damage dealing weapons, you can run any of the five star offensive swords, which I'll put on screen, or any of the four star ones that just give you a ton of stats like Black Sword, Black Cliff, or even something like the Harbinger of Dawn, since you're going to be shielded as long as you stay high HP. So many things you can do. You can even go an EM weapon if you're playing her as a Bloom Procker. But generally speaking, as I said, I want to mention those options in case that's what you want to play. But I do recommend these supportive weapons like Sapwood Blade for free to play or Key for her best in slot if you have it. Next up for Kirara's Constellations, I want to start by answering the question of if she's dependent on them. And the answer is no. Like a lot of people have been saying that she might want her C4 or is dependent on it. And while I'll cover how good it is, I really think that she's a perfectly fine and great unit in the teams that I mentioned being Quicken and Nilu Bloom, even at C0 as a strong Dendro Shielder. With that in mind, she does have some upgrades, like notably her fourth constellation. In fact, what your fourth constellation does is just give you a coordinated attack alongside your on-field character when they're normal charge or plunge attacking, which will deal Dendro damage based on your Kirara's attack. While the damage won't be that high, it's a bonus amount of Dendro application, which can be good in certain teams where you might need more Dendro app, and this can happen once every 3.8 seconds. This coordinated attack will happen while your active character is shielded, and as I said, it's a good bonus amount of Dendro, especially in a team where Kirara won't be on field for long, but it isn't enough to be your only source of Dendro. It's mainly just a nice bonus as a passive amount of Dendro application from off field. And so this is the constellation that a lot of people have been talking about. It's nice, but not a needed one. For your other constellations, first of all, your first constellation will give you up to four extra mines of your elemental burst. And while the damage of each of these mines is not that high when compared to even just the main hit of your burst, these extra four mines can help with a bit of Dendro application, especially against a lot of enemies. But overall, it's not the most important constellation. Next up, your C2 will provide party members a smaller version of your shield in co-op. So this is basically just a co-op constellation if that's something that interests you. C3 will give you talent levels to your shield, which is great. And C5 will give you talent levels to your burst. Lastly, your sixth constellation will just be a simple elemental damage bonus to all of your party members after using your skill or burst, lasting for 15 seconds and giving you 12% elemental damage bonus, which is honestly pretty nice. It's just bonus elemental damage to all your party members. So it definitely adds up and definitely makes her a more versatile and potent support for a damage buff to every element. Meaning if you're running, let's say, strong damage, Dendro and Electro characters, you're going to be buffing all of the damage dealers at once. Overall, I think her best constellations are C4 and 6, and also if you do co-op, 2 is fine, but overall, she's a great unit even at C0. She just gains a bit more flexibility and party buffs with her constellations. All right, now with that out of the way, what are Kirara's best teams? Well, as we saw, Kirara is a character who has mainly two playstyles, either being used from on or off field, on field being inside of her cat box form where you hold your skill, and off field being one where you just use her skill and maybe her burst, get a nice shield, apply some Dendro and then swap out and not have to worry about too much. Now, keep in mind when building Kirara teams that while sometimes you may still want a healer, a lot of the times she can replace your healer slot by just being a strong shield character who can protect your team while also giving you that Dendro application. Since her shield is so strong, a lot of these quicken teams that you may be seeing don't necessarily need to run another supportive option. They don't need another healer or another shielder and can just run Kirara in that defensive slot. Whereas for some bloom teams where you may be taking a ton of self damage, having a hydro healer to help alongside your Kirara can always be nice. Because of that, here are some example teams where Kirara shines best. As I mentioned, I believe she's great in a Nilu Bloom team. This is composed of Nilu plus another Hydro character, typically Barbara or Kokomi on full elemental mastery to deal as much Bloom damage as possible as you're applying Dendro with two other Dendro characters, namely Kirara, and then another one. This could be Nahida, main character Kole, Yao Yao, Baiju, or pretty much any other Dendro character where you can use your Kirara primarily for her very strong shield, either from on or off field. You can use her just for the shield and swap out, or you can use her in her cat box form where she'll apply a ton of dendro on field or at least a decent amount allowing you to consistently bloom with your hydro character sometimes you might want to use another character on field like for example if you have yaya's burst or if you're using nahida but in general using her in a cat box form with a nilu bloom team is something that i really liked and was super super comfy to play i don't think i died a single time while testing her on stream it was a lot easier than playing nilu bloom teams with only one healer which would be 
like a Kokomi on full elemental mastery, as this Dendro shield really does help survive your bloom damage. Moving on, you can also play Kirara in a Quicken team, where you can actually manage to have a reliable Quicken aura on enemies just by applying a hit of Dendro, using your electric characters, and then swapping back into her to apply a bit more Dendro when your cooldowns back up, maintaining the Quicken aura on enemies. This can be done with only your skill, but I also would recommend your burst for consistency. And you just apply some Dendro, then apply as much Electro as you can, and it will greatly amplify the damage of your Electro carries and make a really good team where you don't need a healer because of how strong your shield is. These teams are very flexible. My favorite Quicken team is with Kaching, Fischl, and then Animo support, either Kazua or Sucrose, preferably, but you could also use someone like Jean if you want some healing. While this is one example of a Quicken team, you can use pretty much any Electro character that can proc Quicken. Examples include Yai Miko or even Sino if you want to play them in a purely Quicken team. With that in mind, for Sino in particular, I'm going to skip a few teams here, but you can also play Hyper Bloom with him, and you can play some Hyper Bloom teams in general with Kirara, but keep in mind that since her Dendro application is not that fast, especially from off field, you typically would want to run her with another Dendro option. The main character can work, but ideally, if you have more Dendro application, like even someone like Nahida, it would work even better. Because of that, these teams I've actually quite enjoyed as a nice second supportive option, a bit more Dendro, and also a very nice shield, which can come in clutch. Keep in mind that I don't typically recommend her on field for Hyper Bloom teams, or Burgeon for that matter, because most Hydro supports that apply fast Hydro, like Yolanda or Sing Cho, both require normal attacks, and Kirara on field obviously can't, and the same can be said with the primary Burgeon support, which is Toma, who wants you to be normal attacking, which is why I don't typically recommend Kirara in a Toma Burgeon team, but she can be viable in other Burgeon teams as a secondary Dendro, because her alone is not enough Dendro for those team comps. Now, to not make this too complicated though, she can be used in pretty much any Dendro team as just a solid shield option, just keep in mind that she only applies enough Dendro in teams where you're either running Nilu Bloom with another Dendro character, or using her on field the entire time, but keep in mind that her Dendro application isn't enough for teams like Hyper Bloom as a solo Dendro option, so you'd use her with another one. With that in mind, her Dendro application is enough for Quicken teams as I mentioned, even as a solo Dendro option because just a little bit of Dendro is enough to maintain the Quicken aura on enemies. Other good teams include using her alongside another Dendro character, like Al Hytham for a bit more Dendro application and a nice shield, or even Sithnadi, where having a shield can be nice to make sure that you can charge attack, or charge shot rather, and also swap into your Yai Miko safely. Keep in mind that a lot of these slots in your team comps other than Kirara are very flexible, so you can use pretty much any character character of the elements that I'm showing. Now with that in mind, for a sort of showcase, what I want to do is actually show you guys a clip of my Nilu Bloom fully clearing, where I was using a Kirara on a pure HP build, almost 40,000, with a Sacrificial Sword and also the Deepwood Memory set, as well as a Quicken Showcase to show you what it looks like in practice. Alright, so for the showcase this time, I'm going to do something a bit different, where I'm going to show a clear of 12-3, the three Magu Kenkis, with a Nilu Bloom team where Kirara was used on field to tank all the damage with her very resistant Dendro Shield, tanking all of the self blooms in a situation where I otherwise would have died and did not dodge any of the attacks coming my way. Obviously, you can still dodge with her, but I kind of just did this lazily on stream to prove a point where I just did a general like Dendro rotation. I marked everything with Nahida, used my Nilu's skill, and then summoned Kokomi's Kurage to apply Hydra to enemies, and then swapped into my Kirara, went into her cat box form, and as you can see, obviously I tanked like an ungodly amount of damage, which I probably shouldn't have because I was only at 23k HP, but I still tanked it. And then here, just by rolling around, my Kokomi kind of healed me back up, but also my tanky shield just let me live. So as you can see, I swap back to my Kirara, who's low HP, tanked all this damage with my shield without really doing anything. I literally just sat there and as you can see by the HP bars of the Magu Kenki, I cleared them extremely rapidly. This was not an optimal rotation by any means. I literally just Wait, face tanked I everything. Anything. Yeah, as you can see from the live footage. Where even when I swapped into at 11k HP and I procced a brand new shield, I still could tank the Magu Kenki's attacks Wait, and my Bloom's damage, and the Magu Kenki's died in a pretty fast time. As you can see, at around 9 minutes, I was using my Nilu skill, I swapped out of her, and then the Magu Kenki's were literally dead 20 seconds later at 837, in a rotation where I did not think, I did not dodge, I literally just ran around in a circle, tanked as much damage as possible in pretty much the worst case scenario, on a Kirara who started at half HP, and I still bloomed everything and cleared easily. Now, with the short a bit of a better clip where I'm not just face tanking everything, although that was done just to show like the comfort of her shield. Uh, this is just a Nilu Bloom clip again, but from a different clear where I'm using Kirara. And as you can see here, I'm just doing a normal rotation, setting everything up, going to Kirara, using her skill. I didn't even use her burst here because I didn't need to, although I could have. Running around in the box, applying Dendro to everything, getting pretty decent bloom damage from my Hydro character. As you can see, 35k from those blooms, 21 from the, I guess, bad ones where a different character was procking it. But as you can see, and then I just used my burst there because might as well. I just cleared that super fast. I could replay it with 
without pausing it in case you just want to see the whole thing. Running around in my box, not really taking damage because I have a shield and a bit of healing from Kokomi on full EM, so it's not healing that much. Tanking all of my blooms and just killing everything really fast. Even this next part was really rapid. Again, this is a place where Nilu Bloom works well in general. Even another Dendro character would have worked, but Kirara gives you that comfort and just, I guess, flexibility of having a tanky shield and being able to just apply Dendro while walking around and being a cat, which is a very important thing to mention. And now to show just a pretty standard quicken clip, uh, I'm basically just applying Electro, swirling it because I'm using an Anemo character. And then when I use my Dendro on Kirara, even just her skill, but obviously use your burst if you have it as well, it applies enough Dendro to keep the quicken aura on enemies to where I can consistently aggravate with both of my Electro characters. As you can see, there's a bunch of aggravates happening, even just from using Kirara's abilities once and then swapping out, not using her on field, and I'm still shielded, getting the aggravates and killing everything very fast. It is a very straightforward team to play, uh, but one that I still wanted to show as a very efficient option. And so, yeah, that's about it. Kira is a character who I really like as having a surprisingly strong shield while also just giving you some dendro. I don't think she's meta-defining. I think she's interchangeable with Yao Yao, but a great four-star option in many teams where you want that comfort. And if you just like the character, also being great for exploration, you can literally just meow every time you jump if that's something that you want to be doing. Uh, any character who I have had a ton of fun playing and testing around with. And so overall, I do like her as just a decent, really strong shielder, genuinely, but decent option otherwise for a team that wants a bit more dendro without having the most dendro application. Apologies for the slight delay on this video. It could have been out like a day sooner, but I was kind of busy with some other things. So I hope it still came out in time for you guys. And I hope you enjoyed. And as always, if there's anything new I want to add, it will be in a pinned comment as she's new. So new things may be discovered. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.